For those of you wondering, no, January 1st was not going to be the only Raw review of 2018. My apologies, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather the past couple of days, and still kind of am. But nonetheless, I choose to soldier on as only the Schleg Daddy can. Sucks for all of you. But I'm here. I'm here, baby. It's time to talk about Raw. And there's one thing I want to point out. I know a lot of you are going to be talking about Braun Strowman and his impressive feat of strength of attempted murder. But I assure you, it is nothing but a drop in the bucket. Boop. Compared to what you're going to see later on in this Raw review. All I've got to say is hashtag Schleg Daddy Strong. Yeah. Eat shit, Braun. You're about to see what a real feat of strength looks like. When you're going up against the college football playoff national championship game, you would think you would want to get the show off to a hot start. You would think you would want to throw something big, something important, to try and keep your audience's attention so that way they're not ultimately flipping over to Georgia and Alabama. So the WWE's great answer was Jason Jordan. And I have to say, this segment kept my interest. Jason Jordan is raw right now, damn it! And he plays this entitled, uh, lacking in self-awareness prick so well. Just so, so well. Like, everything about him is so inherently annoying. His look, the way he talks, it's just annoying. And it is great. I love what they're doing with this guy right now. He finally has a point. He finally has a purpose. He is finally doing something interesting. And then to top that all off, while the other people will sit there and circle jerk to it, sure, I have to confess that clearly Finny the Twink seemed much more comfortable with his boys around him. What a surprise, Finn Balor being comfortable around strong, half-naked men. But in all honesty, you could tell there was a comfort level and an ease there being around his Balor Club, old Bullet Club boys, that just isn't generally there. And Vince's troll game was on a 100, making sure that they did multiple two-sweets throughout the night. But throughout this whole segment, not only with it being Champions Club and Balor Club, just how annoying and how douchey that was and how fantastic that is, but you're setting up to not only the six-man tag main event that comes up later on in the night, but you're giving Jason Jordan and Seth Rollins a purpose as they are clearly going to be going at it at some point in time in the future, most notably WrestleMania, and you're also giving the Balor Club some type of purpose for coming together and maybe down the road you're sending them at the tag team titles. Who knows? Who cares? This actually was a fun opening segment. It's not the size of the muscles, it's the ferocity. And Braun is a bitch. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. You want a feat of strength? I'll show you a feat of strength. Hashtag Schlig Daddy Strong, bitches. Yeah. Braun's going down. But anyways, Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Sonya Deville and what's her name? Mandy Rose. Who knows? Who cares? As the whole time this is going on. I was so distracted by how much better look Mickey James looked than anybody else out there. Period. Like, it's almost tragic. Like, she's even got mom badge, and it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. And then with this actual match, why are we beating, what are they called, Absolution? Now, who gives a crap? Because they're going to be irrelevant soon enough anyways. But you've had all of this of them attacking women and so on and so forth, and now we're just beating them in tag matches. WWE for you. I guess that's all I can say. Don't think. Don't think. Don't think, Jeff. It's okay, Kurt Hawkins. You can't win any of them. Anybody could go out there in politic and get the occasional victory. It takes a real talent, a real man, to lose them all. If you're going to suck, then tank and go for the toilet bowl, baby. And as far as what happened after this, after Kurt Hawkins had another glorious loss, it's Woken Matt Hardy. It's Bray Wyatt. And we decide we're going to have a laugh off. And honestly, at this point, the only ones that should be laughing are the fans at this 
stupid story, and in particular, at Bray Wyatt's everything. Yes, Matt Hardy won, and fun is about. I hope you didn't forget me, because I am still around. While the Woken One goes to his seven deities, I don't, I just do Pilates. Oh yeah, oh yeah. While he says, how wonderful, I will appear soon and it will be delightful. <laughs> While he plays with Vanguard One, you'll soon see who's the real crazy one. Yippee, yippee. Stay tuned soon for the debut of the Shattered Slag Daddy. <laughs> Again, going head up against the college football playoff national championship game, we needed something to suck us back into Raw, at least for a little bit, because you know your mind's going to wander if you're a sports fan or anything like that. And knowing what you typically get out of Raw, it's very easy to understand why your mind would wander a lot, and you would want to go over to the remote and change the channel to something other than the USA Network. But lo and behold, we got ourselves a little gift about an hour into the night. An Elias musical performance, all to build up to the return of The Miz. Awesome! And yes, it is awesome to see The Miz back on WWE television once again. One of the easily most see, must see people, whatever the hell, in WWE. Like, clearly. And you see it here. And I appreciated the banter back and forth between him and The Miz Taraj. But then when he got down to business and he started talking about Roman Reigns, like, that's why Miz has always been my mid-card MVP for WWE. Is because when it's something involving a mid-card title, it's in this case the champion that makes the title, not the title that makes the champion. Because it's so often the case of this company, that title isn't making any damn body. When it's the Miz though, it is at least a mutually beneficial reciprocal relationship. Really more so bordering on the Miz makes that belt mean something. And then the revelation later on by Kurt Angle. That he's agreeing with The Miz, and we're going to get him and Roman Reigns for that IC title at the Raw 25th anniversary show? Shine me up there! Awesome! Yeah, Braun can sit there and pull down a freaking stage. Well, let's see him sit there and clang and bang some iron while he's doing a Raw review. No pain! No pain! Braun's a bitch! No pain! Sled Daddy Strong! No pain! Cruiserweight title match, Cedric Alexander, Enzo Amore. I don't know why they felt the need to go down the rocky track with uh, Goldust and Cedric Alexander, but that's where they went. They went down the Mickey path. It was alright. It was kind of funny. But then this match was also kind of funny in its own way, because as it went down, it was really, truly hard to tell whether Enzo Amore was legitimately hurt or not. Now, this could have been the whole angle as the excuse for him to get counted out and lose the match, and we could have gotten worked, or I could have gotten worked. And if that's the case, that's fine, cool. But there was also that element of reality, thinking that Enzo Amore was such a putz that Enzo Amore was so stupid when it comes to the actual art of performing in the ring that when Cedric Alexander did the flippy spot out of the ring, over the top rope, and Enzo didn't take it right, just kind of sitting there and let him fall on him instead of like catching him and going to the side like a real trade professional would, that it made me believe that this asshole legitimately hurt his foot. And I haven't read up over the past couple of days to know whether it was legitimate or not. I'm assuming it's a work. But either way, it wouldn't have been a surprise to me. Meanwhile, at least with this match, it wasn't a decisive finish, so you have an excuse for another one, meaning more time for Enzo in the ring. And news flash, Enzo. Naya's trying to give it up to you for free. You don't even have to give her ten bucks. If you don't smash that shit, 
everybody out there, especially Black WWE Universe, is revoking your G card now. Braun Strowman's a bitch. His ass is mine. But none of that way like you think. I'm going to get him. I'll show you what a fetus strength really is. Ooh, look at this. This is what Schlag Daddy Strong is all about, bitches. Sometimes on Raw, you get surprises. They could be good. They could be bad. Sometimes you just don't know. I will say this. Titus Worldwide beating the bar, the former Raw Tag Team Champions, was a massive freaking surprise. It was this weird combination of on the one hand, I pop for the shit, and on the other hand, I'm like, they just beat the bar? What the hell is going on here? And still a couple of days later, I have no clue what the hell just happened. Get this straight. Let me get this straight now. Braun Strowman damn near commits murder, and the people pop for him. We have our champ Brock Lesnar laid out like he got killed, and everybody acting like he's pathetic. So that way, we're going to wheel him out in a stretcher and send him off in an ambulance like he's a freaking bitch? And all the while, we just say, screw Kane, just let him walk off, and he's not even the champion! Again, it's cool that Strong can get over, but Braun Strong is nowhere near hashtag Schleg Daddy Strong. And we've been waiting all night for this. The time has finally come. And you want to see hashtag Schleg Daddy Strong truly in action. You want to see what a true, impressive feat of strength looks like. Anybody can sit there and throw a freaking grappling hook on the first shot again to wrap around and pull down the freaking stage. That's child's play. Rob, let's see you open this jar, bitch. That's a real feat of strength. Haven't had anybody loosen it up. Haven't had anybody do anything to it. It is undoctored jar. And I will make this my bitch. Just like Braun Strowman is a bitch. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The real, true definition of Schlag Daddy Strong. Watch this feat of strength as I open this jar like a mother humper. Are you ready? Are you ready? Go! You put him on your cutter tongue nowadays. We'll do it. Come on. No pain. No pain. No pain. I think it's on there really good. Sorry. I'll switch hands. This is the spank bank hand anyways. This is the one that's got to work. Let's do this. You can do it. No pain. No pain. Bronze a bitch. Schleg that is struck. I can't do it. Wasn't that embarrassing? Well, screw it. I just made a fool of myself. God damn it, we're professionals here. Did you super glue this thing? This is OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. That's it, I'm done. This is a joke. A goddamn shame. Bush League. I guess watching all that New Japan makes a difference. What's going on, everybody? Marcus Smart here. What are we doing? Wait, where's the Slug Daddy? Are we bailed because he couldn't open this jar? <laughs> this is strong style, bitch. Look at me. I will open and close the jar at will because that's what watching the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Okada can do for you. Big strong country pipes right here, bitches. Well, I guess we need somebody to talk about the rest of Raw. Well, let's have Marcus Smart do it. <laughs> Monday Night Raw. 
Who watches three hours of Monday Night Raw? SmackDown is the A-show of WWE. Yes, yes, yes. And especially this Monday, there were so many other distractions, most notably watching replays on a never-ending loop of Wrestle Kingdom 12. Oh my god. Alpha versus Omega. Naito versus Okada. It was splooge 24-7. And how dare Dave Meltzer only give the Alpha Omega match five stars. Ridiculous and outrage. There should be an immediate investigation. So I guess we need somebody to talk about the rest of Raw. What happened? Samoa Joe. He happened. He wants John Cena. That's what he said. He announced his entrance into the Royal Rumble. He said the first person he's targeting is John Cena. There's so much story here. So many years of history. We want and need Samoa Joe versus John Cena at WrestleMania. That's what we need. Hopefully Samoa Joe is able to make the show with his apparent foot injury. It's terrible. And what else is terrible? Nia Jax pummeling Asuka. What's worth the Pearl Harbor job? Seriously. I didn't know Asuka only spoke Japanese, Naya. Seems like I've seen her cut plenty of promos in English. And if you've ever bothered to actually watch the shows that WWE puts out there, you would know this too. And why are we beating down Asuka? She is the Empress. She is supposed to be the dominant force in WWE's women's division. And we're beating her down with this plumpy fuck Nia Jax. This is outrageous. And of course, the number one highlight of the night, along with the reunion of the Balor Club officially, too sweet, was the Balor Club beating that stupid Champions Club in the main event on Raw. Sorry, Sethy baby, but you had to take the fall in this one, because they're sure as hell not going to have the Golden Goose Roman do it, even though he's more like the Golden Douchebag. And then Jason Jordan Child, please. What Marcus Smart knows is this is that the Balor Club is good for business. And we can all fantasize about it, WrestleMania. The Bullet Club versus the Balor Club. You say it can happen contractually. I say, screw you! It has to happen. It will happen. Because they would be two of the best motherfucking factions in the world. And this was an epic conclusion to Monday Night Raw.